The word is necrophilia. They're quite normal people, just with different passion. A woman cursed with a secret too terrible to reveal. Doomed to love only the dead. Everybody and welcome to episode 29. I think it's episode yeah, 29. Episodes rolling by. Of 13 o'clock podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. We uh, have seen that we've had some fans on our YouTube page. That's pretty cool. That yeah. like, seem to watch all our shows and seem to like them. And that's pretty awesome. Yeah. The, the, uh, the podcast is doing good too. Yeah. So we appreciate mm-hmm. everyone's support. And uh, if you like the show, I'm, I'll put a link to the uh, Project Entertainment Network Patreon page. And they have uh, shirts and stickers and buttons and stuff like that you can get if you give them a dollar or two a month. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of other cool podcasts on their network as well. And I'm sure they would appreciate it. Yeah, we were, you know, I kind of want to have avoided monetizing this show, but I think we're probably going to monetize this show. Yeah, we are thinking about it. It'll move, move us up in the algorithms. But what sucks about it is that they'll probably put commercials on it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, we already put commercials on it because right. we have sponsors, but, you know. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. We're thinking about it. So, right. you know, don't get too bummed out. We don't know if we're going to do it yet. But anyway, so today we're kind of doing a <laughs> morbid kind of topic. Yeah. I originally wanted Jenny to call this uh, the, uh, this show Grave Rapists. Yeah. Instead of Grave Robbers, more like Grave Rapists. Yeah. But I'm not sure if any sex really happened with these two cases. One of them possibly. Yeah. So maybe that's not quite an accurate term. Yeah. Uh, Basically, we're talking about two cases of necrophiliacs. Now, necrophilia, aside from being pretty gross. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people know it like in context of like serial killers, because like a lot of serial killers were necrophiles, you know, Ed Gein, obviously, yeah. um, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, Edmund Kemper, uh, I think even Ted Bundy. Right. Was uh, had some necrophiliac tendencies. But the thing about that is that, yeah, here's the thing. If you're already a serial killer and then it's you are also a necrophiliac, that it's just kind of like, you know, that's just kind of like the snot frosting on the shit cake. You know what I mean? Because it's like, oh, he's a serial killer. Oh, and by the way, he's also a necrophiliac because yeah. of course he is. Well, yeah, they kind of do that anyway. Right. So it's like, it's not terribly surprising. No. So I kind of thought these two guys' cases were more interesting because they're actually not serial killers. Yeah. And we're actually kind of normal people. Well, supposedly. Well, seemingly normal. A normal person doesn't do this kind of thing. No. <laughs> it's like seemingly normal people. Who um, just had some really interesting proclivities, let's say. And one of them seems to be a necroph- necrophile. I think the other one is kind of in question, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's questions in both cases, but they're both super weird. And it's they're also kind of... These cases are also a little bit sad. Yeah. I feel like they're a little bit sad. Tell us what the cases are. Well, the first one we're going to talk about, because the second guy we're going to talk about is probably a lot better known. Yeah. But the first guy, I came across this guy when I was researching the other guy. And uh, this was actually a pretty recent case. It happened in Russia. And his name is Anatoly Moskvin. And the interesting thing about Anatoly is that, like I said, he was a, actually a really well-respected member of his community. He was an academic. He had a PhD in Celtic studies. Uh, he was a linguist. He did all kinds of translations. He was like really well known. Yeah. Done all these translations and stuff. He spoke 13 languages. Um, you know, his colleagues and friends and stuff like that thought he was a genius, which okay. he does sound like a genius. All right. But as with a lot of these kind of super genius people, also usually a little percentage of crazy mixed in there too. I'm not really sure why that happens, but it does seem very common. I think he had he had that uh, with autism, slightly autistic, maybe like yeah. Asperger's or something. Now, yeah, he did kind of seem like that because he was kind of a loner, um, mm-hmm. kind of an eccentric. He lived with his parents. He never married. He never dated. They think he might be a virgin. Ooh. Um, 
But, you know, that's unconfirmed, obviously. Yeah, and the guy's about 50 now. I think he's yeah. born in 66? Yeah. Not yet. Yeah, born in 1966. Now, he was also, aside from all of his um, academic activities... Anatoly was also super into cemeteries and death rituals and, you know, kind of uh, mythology about death, like across cultures. And to that end, he has written um, several papers and stuff like that on different cemeteries, like around his area in Russia and all this other kind of stuff. So he's done like all this research. And he also would write for this. And and I love that in this part of Russia where he lives, which is actually, I can't pronounce the name of the city, but it's like the fifth largest city in Russia. And um, they have a weekly newspaper called Necrologies. (laughs) That's just, it's about like um, cemetery lore and like famous people's deaths and things like that. And uh, I'm like, that's kind of awesome that they have a weekly newspaper for that subject. But um So he wrote for that, like, a lot. So him being... And he was all into graves and grave lore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Historic history when it came to uh, funeral practices and stuff. And as it happened, (laughs) that's that's kind of how he ended up getting caught. Because in the area around where he lived, you know, there are a, a great deal of cemeteries and things like that. And... The authorities begin to notice a lot of grave desecrations Mm -hmm. and, you know, bodies being stolen and stuff like that. So they initially enlisted Anatoly to help them figure Mm -hmm. out who was doing it because he was an expert. Like he had walked around to all these cemeteries, like in a 700 mile radius and all this other stuff and was like wrote down all the dead people's names and kept all the track of all the graves and who was buried there and stuff. So they kind of enlisted him. They enlisted his help to find out who, this grave who was doing it. How did they know that the graves were being robbed? Broken um, soil on the surface? Yeah, it was broken. And plus there were things missing off, like sometimes like the metal, you know, the metal plaques like okay. that are on some tombs and stuff were taken off Weird. and right. things like that. So, you know, they asked him for his help and he's like, sure, sure thing. Mm. Okay, but then <laughs> they start delving a little bit more into the case they search his apartment. They get suspicious because I guess he's acting kind of weird. They get suspicious. They search his apartment and they find that there are 26 life-size dolls in his apartment Mm -hmm. that are like dressed in these kind of colorful clothes. And, you know, they look like dolls. You know what I mean? You can see pictures of them online. There's pictures of them all over the place. They just look like dolls. You wouldn't think anything of it. But guess what? Guess what's inside those dolls? Mummified little girls. Yeah. Mummified little girls. That's what's in there. Now. And how many did he have? He had 26 of them. Okay. Although they're not entirely certain, like, if that... Because the original um, the original charge, mm-hmm. the grave desecrations, there were, like, there were over 100 of them. Okay. It was, like, 150 desecrations. So they don't know, like, if he stole that many bodies and if right. they were just pieces of the bodies. Now, the or, grave desecrations, were they all little girls? I don't think so. Okay. It didn't really specify, specify. but all of the um, mummies that they found in his house Mm -hmm. were girls, like, between the ages of about 6 and 15. Okay. And so, uh, here's what he had done. He would go to a cemetery. Like, he was fascinated by death, obviously. He was also fascinated by mummification, like how you do it and stuff like that. And in his house, he had all of these notes and all this kind of stuff about how to mummify bodies like he was learning how to do it right and so he also had like maps of like all the bodies he'd taken and stuff like that and so what he would do is he would go and you know and take the bodies and for a while he would just take them and then mummify them and then just kind of bury them, like kind of back where they were, or like near his house. So he just kind of borrow them. Yeah, he would just kind of borrow them for a little while. Right. And then, um, you know, then he started bringing them back to his house and making dolls out of them. So, like, what he would do is he would mummify them using like salt and baking soda. Mm-hmm. And then he would kind of like, you know, start wrapping them in clothing and, you know, right. like a mummified like bandages and stuff like that. And then he would dress them up. And then he would kind of, he covered their faces, it looked like, with kind of like nylons or socks or something like that. And then he would like paint faces on there, like with nail polish and stuff. Okay. 
Some of them look like they didn't really have faces, but maybe that was just the pictures were crappy. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's just like this super creepy. And like I said, they also, also, yeah. Why nail polish? Why not, why not real paint? I don't know. Maybe he thought nail polish would last longer because it was more of an enamel. I don't, I don't know. know. Weird. Maybe he liked the look of they it. Don't look too, they don't look too artistic to me. They don't look realistic. They like, don't. They look actually, yeah, they're, they they're kind of. Yeah, kind of amateurish. They are very amateurish. And yeah. I mean, you know, he's, he's working with a mommy, I guess. Right. But, um. Yeah, so, so he would like, and he would, you know, stuff them full of, you know, fabric so they would look like a person and then... You stuff the abdomen up full of fabric? For a fabric, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> and then sometimes he would put like wax, wax masks over their faces and put well, here's the wigs thing. on them and here's, stuff here's like that. Here's the thing that. I don't get. When, when you turn a body into a mummy, doesn't it become kind of like beef jerky? Yeah. I mean, how, how does it I mean, I'm not flexible? how well... I'm not sure how well his mummification techniques right. were working. I mean, stay flexible. Yeah, I don't. You know, know what I mean? It'd be yeah. like carrying around a, a you know a wooden a wooden statue or something. Yeah, true. Weird. It weird. is pretty weird. Yeah. Now this guy, mm-hmm. and I gotta admit, I mean, you know, it's super creepy to keep mummified little girls in your house. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm not nuts. saying that. Totally nuts. He's nuts. Totally nuts. But I feel kind of sorry for him too because. You know, obviously this shit's not right. And yeah. they were, and the authorities were like, okay, well, so they arrested him, right? In 2011. And, um, actually they just arrest him. It's, you know, desecration of graves, desecration of dead bodies, whatever, which is illegal. And, uh, he would have got five years in prison, up to five years. Um, but they actually did a psychiatric evaluation and discovered that he suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Huh. Now, here is what he said. And he actually, shortly before um, he was convicted, he wrote uh, an essay. And I, I believe it turned up in Necrologies, that magazine I was talking about earlier, but I, I could be wrong about that. Where he said where his obsession with dead bodies, and particularly the dead bodies of little girls, came from. He said when he was a kid, he was super into cemeteries or... Either he was super into cemeteries or his parents were always taking him to walk around cemeteries. He was always in cemeteries when he was a kid. And he kind of had a fascination with them. Now, he claims that when he was little, he was at a cemetery and there was a funeral for a little girl going on in the cemetery. And somebody that was at that funeral, for some reason, pulled him over to the body and made him kiss the girl on the forehead. Weird. Like, kind of forced him to... Is that a Russian reason. thing? I wonder if that's a Russian thing. I don't thing. know. Like, so I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what right. he said. And he said that's kind of what started his weird obsession. Right. Like, with these little girls. Now, it should be noted that, like I said, as weird as this is, there is no evidence that he was having sex with them. You right. know what I mean? So it wasn't like a... Not fetishistic in that sense. Right. Um. Mostly, his motivation was... That he thought that the little girls, like he felt bad for them and he thought that he, because they had died so young and he thought he was protecting them and that if he preserved them, then they could be brought back to life with black magic and that they would have their bodies there when they came back to life. Okay. I don't know. You buy it? You think that's what the real motive was? I don't know. That's what he said. And like I said, he was psychiatrically evaluated and they said, yeah, this guy is not right. Yeah, well, maybe. And he, and he said too that, I mean, because a lot of gra- different graves, like I said, were desecrated and stuff like that. But he said what he would do is when he found out that a little girl had gotten killed or, you know, that there had been a funeral for a little girl, he would go to that grave and he would lay on it and listen. And he said, and if the little girl told me that she wanted me to take take her out then i would take her it's like but if i didn't hear anything that i would just leave her where she was Mm -hmm. so he thought that he was helping these little girls that didn't want to be in the grave anymore and he thought that eventually they would be brought back to life Mm -hmm. which you know that's pretty sad if he really does feel that feel like that (laughs) that's weird you know what i mean yeah but you know, that's why he said that these little girls were calling to him that, that he needed to save them. Okay. And um, now they said that he was aware that it was against the law. Right. 
but that... But he had a higher purpose. <laughs> right, exactly. He thought that saving these girls was more important than right. the law was. So, right. so, you know. Now, um, he also, I guess he was also bummed out because, you know, like I said, probable virgin. But he'd always wanted children. Right. And he didn't have any. Um, they even said at one point he tried to adopt a okay. daughter. But they wouldn't let him because he was a single guy and he was too poor. Right. So, um, you know, they wouldn't let him adopt Weird. So he was kind of bummed out about that. But um, like I said, they don't know. It doesn't appear that he had sex with this, with these dolls. Um, I'd kind of be surprised if he didn't. But Yeah, you know, I think he was. Pr- he might have been. I, I, think you, I think it was a pedo. They say he did hang out with them. Like yeah. he would like sing to them. And, Weird. Yeah. And actually, I think some of the other, um, like one uh, essay that I read about it, mm. in Russia... The rumor was that he he would put music boxes inside the bodies uh-huh. so that the dolls would sing Weird. back to him. Yeah, you know what I mean. No evidence though of that. Or no, that I just yeah, I just read that like that some Russians thought that. Okay. And apparently there's there's a thing now they're in that area of Russia where like okay. if someone died and like you were having a funeral and it was like an older woman they'd be yeah. like oh well at least he at least she's safe she's from safe. Yeah. from Anatoly <laughs> like yeah. he only takes little girls <laughs> which is it's fucking awful man it's man. awful it's just I wonder what it smelled like in his house see that's what I mean well, it's the like parents didn't complain no they thought they were just dolls yeah now so yeah I do I feel like he was like constantly like. Probably soaking it in perf- soaking them in perfume and yeah. Febreze and all that. I have, a hard, I have a hard time. You know, I've seen photographs of these dolls. I have a hard time. Uh, I have a hard time believing that the parents didn't think something was up. They when probably you see did that think, doll. You're yeah. like, man, that's a dead body. Yeah, I don't know. It's like when I first saw them, I was just like, what the hell is that about? They do kind of look like. I mean. You know, they're a lot creepier when you The know. proportions of the body, so it's obviously that's a skeleton or, or a body. Yeah. You know what I mean? The face doesn't look too good, but I would... Man, you would think, you know... No, I don't know, man. It's, <laughs> that's just so creepy. You got all of them there. You go like, this isn't right. Man. Yeah, you had like a whole bunch of yeah, them. Yeah, this isn't right. I mean, how big is this apartment is what I want to know. Yeah. Like, because they're saying apartment. I don't know how big the apartment is. Right. And like I said, you know, his parents lived there too. You know, they were gone a lot. But obviously they were there sometimes. It's like, how close a proximity are we li- I mean, Anatoly... You can see in the photograph that it couldn't have been very big. I mean, No, because the, the rooms look very crappy. small. Yeah, and, 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 the rooms look very small. Yeah. And I the mean, Anatoly crappy. looked a little bit like a horde. He had like 60,000 books and they yeah. were kind of like all in stacks on the floor and stuff like that. Because like I said, he was one of those like weird super genius kind of people, yeah. but also a total nutcase. Yeah. You know, but a sad nutcase. I mean, so what happened to him? He was eventually, um, you know, they didn't put him in prison because right. of his uh, mental illness. So they actually put him in a psychiatric hospital. And I think every now and then they kind of review his case to see if we should let him out. And they're like, yeah, maybe not so much. So he's still in there. So he is still in there. Now okay. they only arrested him in 2011. So this wasn't a terribly long time ago, right? But uh, yeah, he still is uh, in in there. Okay, and. I don't know. It's Gotta just protect the dead children. Yeah, it's like that. That part. <laughs> it just makes it's just very, it just very suspicious to me that there are no little boys in there. Yeah, that's true. Just the girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that is pretty right. weird. I mean, like I said, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna hate on the dude. It's like, it, and the weird thing, it's like he doesn't look like. I mean, because there's pictures of him online too, if you want to look. But um, he doesn't look like a weirdo. <laughs> Well, only a weirdo would think you could bring somebody back to their life using science or black magic yeah. or something like that. Like, no. you know what I mean? Like, he doesn't... Like, sometimes yeah. you see, like, you know, uh, necrophiliacs or serial killers and they're yeah. like, oh, well, yeah, obviously, because they look like that. But he doesn't. Yeah. He looks pretty... He just looks like a normal dude, pretty much. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so that's kind of scary. And, you know, I don't know. Like I said, I kind of feel bad for him. This whole... When we started um, talking about doing this topic, the first thing I thought of, one of my favorite short stories, and you guys should look it up. Is called The Death in the Family by Miriam Allen DeFord. Now, they made an episode of Night Gallery out of it, but the episode of Night Gallery is not quite the same as the story. Now, the story I read, it I, I had it in like one of those Alfred Hitchcock anthologies that I loved so much when I was a kid. I still have it. I think it's probably up in the attic. But in the story, and it kind of reminded me of this because there was a it was a mortuary uh, attendant or mortuary owner who uh who was like a lonely bachelor he'd never you know 
had a family or anything mm-hmm. like that. And he got the idea to start stealing bodies that he liked that were in good shape and embalming them and then setting them up like down in his basement. He had like this really nice basement all laid out with a fireplace and stuff like that. And he had like a whole family. And the and the point of the story, the like the beginning of the story was that he gets uh, a dead little girl dropped off on his doorstep by these kidnappers that had kidnapped her for ransom and then they didn't get the ransom. So they killed the little girl and then they dropped her off there. So he had like a big, uh, you know, quandary about whether he should call the police or whether, whether he should, you know, adopt this little girl <laughs> into his dead person family. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's a, like an old, that's from the sixties, that story. So, and also I should note too, that see, this is what happens when you're researching a podcast like this and you end up finding out all kinds of like weird facts that you didn't know. Like if you guys seriously go read the Wikipedia page on necrophilia, it's a hoot. Well, especially the section on animal necrophilia, because yeah. here is something I never, that never occurred to me that necrophilia is actually pretty common like in the animal kingdom which you wouldn't Mm. think that that would have evolved i guess or that it would still be around but it's actually very common and not just you know oh the you know a frog is like humping a dead frog that's got got run over by a car or whatever Mm. like that which does happen one frog went on for eight hours they observed damn humping this frog and i was like wow i'm kind of impressed damn (laughs) Also, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go anywhere. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> okay. Also, homosexual necrophilia is kind of Weird. common too. It's particularly among birds. Birds. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they'll they'll and some jump of them jump on a dead bird. Well, just some tear it up. well, and some of them will kill another bird and then fuck it. Damn. Like a male bird will kill another bird and then fuck. Damn. It's not like it's not like every member of the species does that, but yeah. it's a pretty significant percentage. That's bizarre. Yeah. And I, and I love kind of, I think on, I think it was on the Wikipedia page where they were talking about like a pigeon that was humping one who's got head got crushed in the road and oh, stuff like man. that. I'm like, man, animals are gross. They just take advantage. Hey, it's free. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah. laying right there, man. It's yeah. like, they don't care that it's like not going to lead to anything. That's ridiculous. Yeah, it they're is. Gonna, you, you, they're going to use it up before it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> nothing yeah. goes to waste in the animal kingdom. No, nothing. I guess not. <laughs> All right. You got so, pictures of that too. There's some, there's a lizard. Yeah, if you go on the, like I said, if you go on the Wikipedia page about necrophilia, I'm sure I'm on a list somewhere, like all these fucking Wikipedia pages I go to. Yeah. But, uh, although I'm not as weird as the person that had to write this, so I'm just saying. But yeah, there is a, there is a, uh, picture on here of a, uh, one of those big monitor type lizards. Yeah. Fucking a corpse. You're ridiculous. He seems into it too. (laughs) Weirdos. Maybe they don't, maybe they don't really know it's dead per se. It's just that it's not getting away. Yeah. It's maybe maybe no that's what it death. is. Yeah, I think they're not thinking about the death part of it. Yeah, just they're like, just thinking, well, it's just it's not moving, just laying there. So, so might as well. Yeah, might as well jump right on it. Yeah, he's not resisting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, animals! <laughs> All right, so it's coming about up to the halfway point. So yeah. we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about the much better known case of Mister mm-hmm. Carl Tanzler. Most yeah, this of you guy, been- he's something else. Yeah, and I mean, there's been like a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, that's here in Florida, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. it was. Okay. The original Florida man. Yeah, yes. original Florida man. The original Florida man. Sorry, you guys. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Florida. I don't know what the hell's wrong with everybody down here. But anyway, so we're going to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm Captain Dallas Lee, and I'm one of the characters in the Kirkman Journals Project Entertainment Network's Pro Wrestling Podcast. Every Friday, Token Top Florida, Steve Mesa, and the Viking Superkick Pro Wrestling in the Hot Spot. Featuring interviews with the up and coming indie superstars that are stable and shoots while it works. You can only hear them on the Project Entertainment Network. <laughs> Thank you very much. Remember the Alamo! Subculture Corsets and Clothing is our favorite store for unusual clothing, shoes, and accessories. They offer a wide selection of men's and women's clothing at great prices. Subculture also offers a cool selection of shoes and accessories. Steampunk, gothic apparel, retro, corsets, and so much more at Subculture Corsets and Clothing. Check out Subculture online at subculturecorsets.com. That's subculturecorsets.com. Make sure you use the discount code 13 o'clock for a 10% discount. 
subculturecorsets.com, or visit their store in Jacksonville, Florida, just off I-95. Project Entertainment Network presents Buttercup of Doom with your host, Kelly Owen, just a girl. A girl who writes horror and thriller fiction, talks to bugs, jumps in puddles, and now hosts a weekly podcast full of opinions, advice, and a touch of gypsy wisdom. Whether it's current affairs or social media nightmares, join me as I rant and rave and offer up a big old bucket of common sense. (laughs) Wednesdays on Buttercup of Doom. Hollow Earth. Graphic design by Jenny Ashford. Specializing in posters and flyers. Special rates for bands and artists. Quick turnaround times. Books and CD covers. Consultations through email or Skype. Logos and packaging. Payment through PayPal. Ads and promo materials. Satisfaction guaranteed. Visit the Facebook page at Hollow Earth Design or email Hecate80 at Hotmail.com. Okay. Yeah. Necrophiliacs. Now oh. we are talking about the case of Carl Tanzler. Original Florida man. The original Florida man. Yeah. Well, I'm sure there were some before that. I'm sure there's yeah. been Florida man before there was even a Florida. There's something in the fucking water down here. Look how debonair this guy's trying to be. He is fucking debonair. Yeah. Well, he's not, I mean, he's not actually from Florida. Like a lot of people aren't. I am. Yeah. But, um, you know, a lot of people aren't. He was actually a uh, German. He was born in Germany. Right. And uh, he moved here later. Now, he's also known by Carl von Kossel or Kossel or Count von Kossel. He's not a count, but whatever. He thought he was the shit, I guess. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> he was the count. Yeah. <laughs> also, kind of a respectable dude. Now, the weird thing about Carl Tanzler is that... I don't think that he had, well, if he did have like necrophiliac tendencies prior to the, you know, the one incident that made him yeah. famous, he must have kept him way on the DL because yeah. I don't think there was ever any hint that he was up to anything like that. Okay. But, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but again, he seemed like a fairly normal dude. He was a radiologist. He kind of looked like a Mr. Peanut. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, you know that peanut that with the, with the spectacles, with the with the, and the top, with the, the top yeah. hat. And the, What's that fucking thing called? I don't know. I bought you one. Yeah, Mr. Peanut. Yeah, a monocle. A monocle. There you yeah. go. Why couldn't I remember that word? I yeah. don't know. But um, so Carl Tanzler, he moved to Zephyr Hills, Florida, and he had a wife and kids okay. at the time. All right. But then, for some reason, he decided he was gonna leave the wife and kids in Zephyr Hills, and then he moved to Key West. All right. And he took a job in the Marine Hospital there. Like I said, he was a he was a x-ray tech or a radiologist rather. Now it was probably a separation. But you know, back in those days they kind of kept that stuff on the down row. Yeah, yeah. Basically a divorce. But yeah. I'm sure about it might have been. Now they had two kids. Uh one of the kids died um at ten years old, I think of diphtheria. And the other one lived, but you know. But he, I don't think he moved here until later. But like I said, he seemed like a fairly normal dude, right? So he moves down to Key West. He takes a job at the Marine Hospital as a, as a tech. And then in 1930, this woman comes to the hospital for treatment. She's 21 years old and her name is Maria Elena Milagro de Hoyos. Okay. She comes in with her mother. Now, she has tuberculosis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, which, you know. How that was almost deadly. That's almost always deadly. Back Pretty much, yeah. yeah. In 1930, it was. Um, so she comes into the hospital, and Carl Tanzler sees her and is immediately in love. Yeah, and he's an old guy at this time. Yeah, he was, fair, he was fairly old. Well, he was probably he about was, 60. Yeah, he was a lot older than her. Oh, yeah. Now, the interesting thing about why he immediately fell in love with her 
was that he claimed that ever since he was young, he had been having visions of, and dreams about this distant relative. And this distant relative told him that his soulmate was this particular girl and showed him in his dreams what this girl looked like. Right. So evidently, when Maria Elena walked into the hospital, he said, that's her. Yeah. That's who I've been seeing in my dreams all this time. And she and I are meant to be together. He made that up. I bet you he right, made that up. Right. But I'm just saying, that's, that's what he I claims anyway. That. Yeah. But, I mean, he must have, like, really fallen for her hard because there's yeah. some pretty fucking weird shit yeah. happened after this. I think he saw her, thought she was hot, and then he did what he did. And then afterwards, when he got caught, he had to make up an explanation. Oh, you have to understand this. You know, I was, my ancestral spirits were telling it me was, that. Yeah, just like yeah. the other, just like Anatoly was sort of right, trying, yeah. like, there was a higher purpose. Right. Yeah, he and, made that up. Though. Yeah, and there are, like, some other similarities, too. They're just trying to justify necrophilia. Yeah, true. Now... Okay, Elena was, which was what they called her usually. Uh, like I said, she had tuberculosis. Now, Tansler was not a doctor doctor, mm -hmm. but he decided that he loved her so much and he was going to treat her, right? Uh -huh. Okay. And so the family were like kind of okay with this because he seemed, you know, genuine and he right. seemed like, you know, he was all into her and stuff like that. And he would... Pretty much, I mean, essentially, it sounds like he was stealing, like, x-ray equipment and stuff like that, for, like, from the hospital and, like, bringing it to their house. Wow. To, like, to treat, to treat her it. at home. Wow. And he was for giving free, her, huh? yeah, yeah, and he was giving her, like, all these, you know, medicines and things like that. And he also kept professing his undying love for her. He brought her presents. He brought her jewelry. While she was alive. Yeah, while she was alive. Okay, I wonder how she responded to this. See, there's really no record of that. She's probably indifferent. Yeah, yeah she whatever. was probably just kind of like, whatever, old guy, thanks yeah. for the necklace yeah. or whatever. It's like, sure. there really, like I said, there really isn't any um, uh, any record of that she right. was all into him too or, you know, she was, she had tuberculosis. She probably yeah. wasn't thinking about. She's 20. Yeah, and she was 21 years old, like yeah. I said. She probably wasn't thinking about, you know, yeah, romance it out with at the time. Dude, yeah. Right. So, you know, even after, uh, you know, all of his, you know, uh, efforts on her behalf, she still died because it was tuberculosis. Now, I wonder if his treatments, you know, if there were, you know, first of all, he's practicing medicine without a license. He wasn't really that too. able to do that. But I wonder if he was using the best treatments of the day or if he was just make, pulling out his ass. Just making it yeah, up. I don't really know. I mean, it's like I mentioned. said, he did have some medical yeah. knowledge because, like I said, okay. he was a radiologist. So... He probably kind of knew what he was doing, I would imagine. Right. Maybe maybe he was doing as well as anybody else could have done it. That's what I mean, because tuberculosis yeah. was almost always fatal in yeah. 1930. So, you know, it's not, it's probably no, it's no, you know, mark on his right. medical knowledge that she died, because she probably would have died anyway. Yeah. But, um, yeah, she ended up dying more than a year later. It was in 1931 in October. And Carl Tanzler, he paid for her funeral. He constructed this huge, uh, like mausoleum. Yeah. You know, there's pictures of it. It's like a really big, you know, in, uh, thing in Key See, West he Cemetery. Had money, he had money. Yeah, he wasn't poor, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and the family was, like I said, again, the family was okay with this. Right. So I'm not sure, like maybe he didn't really come off as creepy to them because they really, I mean, they seem to give him every, um, you know, they they didn't really be like, no, that's okay, or, you know, back off or anything like that. Right. I mean, you know, yeah, I guess it's cool that he's paying for her funeral and they don't have to do it and all this other stuff. But I don't know. At first, I think they didn't think it was creepy, right. even though to us it seems kind of creepy. Yeah. Because it's like, you know. He, well, what, what happened? What happened next? So he paid for the mausoleum, right? And he started visiting the mausoleum. All right. Every night he would go and sit by it. Okay, now she's sealed in there, though, right? Yeah. In the crypt inside but of the mausoleum? he had the key. He had the key. Yeah. He well, was the one time, that had it built. A lot of times when you walk into the mausoleum, though, the coffin is like in a crypt that's yeah. sealed into the wall, you know, usually concrete or something. Well, see, 
Here's was it like thing. that, or did he have see, access to the casket itself? See, that's what, well, he must have. Right. Because, see, here's the thing. Since he paid for it to be constructed, I'm assuming... They did it to his specs. That they did it to his specifications, and he was thinking So ahead. he's in there molesting that body. Well, I don't know if he molested it while it was in there. Right. But he would visit it for a while without taking it out. Okay. You know what I mean? He would just go and visit her. He's in there letting it cook. It's, He's in there letting it cook. So, get get nice and rotten. Oh, man. <laughs> and then, apparently, after a while, and this was this was like a year and a half later, uh-huh. he decided that he didn't want to go to the you know, to yeah. the mausoleum anymore, and he wanted her by him he all the time. take her out of there. Now, he hadn't done any preservations or anything on her. Not at this point, no. She was just, I guess, embalmed. Yeah. Yeah, Which that, that, that'll old. keep them yeah. kind of intact. But they, they decay anyway. They do, yeah. And like I said, this was a significant amount of time later. Yeah. Okay. Right, a this significant amount bad. of time. Yeah, bad. I know it is. So he goes to the cemetery with a toy wagon. <laughs> and, I know, a radio flyer. <laughs> Whatever, I'm assuming. I can just picture it. I can picture the scene. No, Mr. Peanut down there with a <laughs> toy wagon. With it, yeah. Yeah, with a penchant for, for, for necrophilia. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, here's the thing. Much like Anatoly in the first part mm. of this show, uh, Carl claimed that when he would sit by the mausoleum and, uh, you know, and hang out with mm-hmm. his dead girlfriend... Mm-hmm. That she would talk to him and yeah. that she kept telling him, get me out of here. Yes, yeah, so it was all consensual. Yeah. It's all, <laughs> Which is, it's yeah. all consent. The dead can consent. Of sure. Course. Sure. Yeah. They ghostly told me. Sure. <laughs> they ghostly told me. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, he used to sit there and sing to her and she said, please, please, Carl, take me out of here. I don't buy a word what these dudes yeah. say. So, yeah. So he gets the toy wagon and he, um, you know, takes her body out and takes it back to his house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So... Once he gets the body back to the house, obviously she's not in that great a shape. Yeah. So what he does is he puts the bones back together with like coat hangers and like twisted wires and stuff Ugh. like that, like reconstructs oh, it. Oh, so she was falling apart? Well, yeah. Damn. Like I said, it had been so like she, a year and a half. So she was like something out of The Walking Dead at that point. Yeah, she was like Damn. a zombie. Yeah. Um, yeah. This and dude's nuts, man. I know. <laughs> And like I said, it just seemed weird that that he had never done anything like this before, or that they know of. Maybe he did, and they just never mm. caught him. But um, you know, maybe that's why he separated from his wife. Yeah, maybe she's like yeah, maybe creep. maybe she found his stash of like necro porn. Or yeah, something. did they? I wonder if they have necrophiliac porn in 1930. I'm sure they no, do. No, I don't think you so. you don't think. I don't. I doubt it. They had some. I don't rough, think they have it today. They had some. Pre- yeah, they do. They do. What are you talking just about? People pretending like they're dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a fetish too. That's like right. that's like kind of a separate fetish. It's just yeah. people that like to pretend they're dead. I got you. It's it's very rare for people to actually be in it, but there are some. Mm. There are some. So yeah. So you know, he puts the skeleton back together with wire. He puts glass eyes in there because that's not creepy at all. Because oh. I guess she didn't have any eyeballs left. Yeah. I would think. And you know, obviously, the more rotten she got, she would. Um, or Carl rather would put like would kind of patch her up yeah. with a uh, with silk like he had like this silk cloth and he would soak it in wax and plaster yeah and then so he was basically making a paper mache over yeah over, her over, rotted over. flesh yeah. now Damn. here's one of the weirdest things to me right like for the hair because obviously her hair had Probably fallen, fallen out, out and yeah. started falling out so he made a wig. Now, he made a wig out of her actual hair because her family mm-hmm. had given him mm-hmm. her hair. Like, wow. after she died, like, given him some of her hair. Because I wow. guess he asked. And they were like, okay. Wow. To me, that seems like a very strange... Yeah. I mean, like, if... I don't know. In in a way, that almost kind of suggests that maybe she did kind of love him back. Because... I don't know. If it was just some rando or just your doctor or something like that. Just, just, and after she died, and then, like, this guy comes up to is like... Hey, would you mind terribly if I took some of your dead daughter's hair? I think that I think, the and they're parent, all like, "Yeah, no problem." I think the parents were just uh, desperate for medical treatment for the daughter. They're going to put put up with anything to get some free medical treatment, you know, tr- in, in an attempt to save her. That's probably maybe what it's just I don't know. That seems really weird to me because I'm sitting there going, and it's funny because most of the stories about uh, you know most of the things that are written about this, they don't even really 
comment on that. On oh, what? oh, he made a wig out of hair that the family had given him. Yeah. I'm like, what? Yeah. Let's unpack that a well, little bit. Well, maybe they considered him a friend of the family. I guess, but still, I would yeah. think. Even, look, even if I had a friend of the family and somebody died and they and they asked for the hair, I'd be like, uh, bro, no. All right, that's fucking uh, creepy. Stop it. But yeah, so. So yeah, he's he's kind of paper macheing his dream girl back yeah. together, you know, filling her up with rags and stuff like that. And now he um kept her in his bed. Yeah. Okay. And he kept spraying perfume on it and Ew. deodorants and Ew. things like they didn't have Febreze back then, but you know yeah. that, that type of thing um, yeah. to mask the odor. Which I mean, that doesn't work. Oh man. Dead people smell is like the worst thing ever. It's like, can you imagine what his fucking house probably smells like? Oh my God. But, um, so now some reports say that he put a paper tube. Yeah. Up her veg. Yeah. For nefarious purpose. Yeah. Um, and it had evident. I think it had lips on it and everything like that, so he could have sex with it. Oh my god! Ridiculous. Now, see, it would surprise me very much if he wasn't having sex with it. I don't know if the paper tube was really there or if that would just kind of came about later. Oh, but um, god. I mean, the fact that he's that he was in love with her and that he's keeping it in the bed and stuff like that. <sighs> I'm, yeah, I'm kind of. <laughs> Are you gonna need a shower after nah, yeah. this? Are you gonna this need? Is nasty. A I know it's horrible. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. Apparently, he got away with this for quite a while. She was in his house until 1940. So how long are we talking about? And that was like, what, that was like seven years, right? Yeah, because I think he didn't take her body out of the grave until 1933. How how did he get discovered? Well, evidently there were rumors Mm -hmm. going around. Um, I heard that a little boy in the neighborhood, Mm Um, had walked by Tansler's house and had seen him dancing with what looked like a doll, like a big doll. Like he was dancing around his living room with it in his arms. And also the family were suspicious when he stopped visiting the The mausoleum too. I mean, he had stopped visiting that a while before, but, but then I think this, uh, her sister, Florinda, like kind of put two and two together and was like, I don't think she thought that he had stolen the body necessarily, but um, she maybe wondered, you know, what the fuck does he have like a life size doll of my sister? That's super weird. And yeah. she, so Florinda, I mean, for her, you know, in her defense, I mean, she went right to the house and was like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? What's going on? So, uh, yeah, she went to his house. The the sister had heard rumors that he was sleeping with a disinterred body of the sister? Yeah, yeah. So it, so it was getting around. That's what I mean. Like I said, I, I heard that a little boy had seen, like, it was like, why okay. is he dancing with this big doll in there? So I wow. think people kind of started putting two and two and right, two yeah, and two you're talking about. And they knew, I mean, it's kind of a smaller community, wow. so maybe it was kind of getting around maybe that he was obsessed and he yeah, he would have, what a freak he was. Yeah. And maybe the smell, maybe it smelled maybe. really bad. I mean, you know how that smells around there. So, um, so yeah, so the sister was like, you know, arrest this freak, and they did. Um, and they did find uh, the body in there. Now, Carl Tanzler, they actually did give him a, a psychiatric evaluation, obviously, yeah. as you would. But um, they thought that he was competent to stand trial. Uh, so, you know, he had a hearing. It's, you know, for just removing a body without author- authorization, destroying a grave, yada, yada. Now, he ended up getting released because, one, the statute of limitations had expired. Mm. On the crime. Because it's not... I mean, you can right. look, like I said, on Wikipedia. And just grave robbery. It's um, yeah. yeah. Now, it's a felony in some states, but yeah. in others, it's just a misdemeanor. Okay. It's usually not like a super big deal. Right. I mean, as long as you don't, didn't kill the person or anything like that. Yeah, it's nasty, but, you know, yeah. you're not hurting the person. So, and the uh, the odd thing, too, is that in the community, there was actually kind of a lot of sympathy for him. Yeah. Because it was kind of like, oh, it's a great love story. It was kind of like romantic, <laughs> morbid. I think they were reading into it. But romantic, naive. right, naive. yeah. But at any rate, you know, he got he actually got off now. Oh, well, he got off, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> In more ways than one. Damn. I know, I walked right into that, didn't I? Yeah. That was good, though. You picked yeah. right up on that. Now, <laughs> here's the thing. Okay, Carl Tanzler, 
Um, right, a creepy dude, right? But I have to say that the surrounding community of Key West, maybe not much better because after her body had been taken out of his house, they put the fucking body on display in the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Yeah. Or not, you know, or they put it in a in a museum. Yeah. For people to come by and look at it. Dean Lopez Funeral Home, rather. Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum in Key West actually has a fake yeah. setup of it. Because it's kind of a famous thing that happened in Key West. I'm so, ready to walk out. We'll get so, walked out of this show. <laughs> Why? I'm just giving it. I'm just, I've just had all I could take. This shit's nasty. He's like skeeved this out. This shit's nasty. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it's making my skin crawl. Yeah. And I'm going to have to take a shower after this. So. <laughs> it's just, this is like, this is some shit you come up with. This yeah. is how you are. This is how yeah, I. This is how hey, you, this was your going. idea. You, it <laughs> well, was you know your what? idea to you're do Carl Sanders. You're, the one, you're, you're relishing in these details. This is like something out of one of your horror novels. I know. I, I love this shit. Yeah, I know. It's, I she love writes shit. stuff like this. Yeah. In her horror novels. I love this shit. I don't understand. I can't. I can't. Stand <laughs> <laughs> this is why I can never get him to watch like true crime shit with me and stuff no, like I don't that. Like any it's of like, that. yeah. See, no. I, I love that shit, but he can't no. watch it. Mm. But um. Yeah, so like I said, community, not so much better. They put the body, like the paper mache fucking body, they put it on display in this fucking funeral home. And almost 7,000 people like, came through to see it. And I'm sure they probably fucking charged it. So she gets raped when she's dead, and then they pimp her out when she's dead. That's right. what, that's, that's, that's that's what that's, I mean. It's like, yeah. not much better, you guys. Not much yeah. better. Okay? Oh. And so like, yeah, there was like a big sensation in the media. It was like crazy. And like all these people just thought it was super romantic and all this other stuff. And, you know, like I said, he didn't, he didn't go to prison or anything like that. But, you know, it, ugh, here's the thing. So he got off and, you know, I guess he, uh, you know, he just went on and had the rest of his life. He actually wrote an, uh, he wrote an autobiography, which I don't, you know, I'd actually love to read that. It, it uh, was in the magazine Fantastic Adventures, which is like a pulp publication. Now, he, um... His ex-wife, here's another thing that's weird. His ex-wife, Doris, or I guess, I don't know if they were still married, but they were separated because he had left her in Zephyr Hills years before. But she supported him, like, for the mm. rest of his life. So, I don't, you, well, I don't know, whatever. And um, he actually, he had a death mask of Maria Elena. Mm -hmm. And he made it like a life-size doll okay. that he kept until he died. Right. So, yeah, he had a life-size effigy of it. So he had basically a sex doll that just didn't have a rotting corpse in it anymore. Yeah. Which I guess is marginally Maybe better. he should have gone that way the first time. The, exactly. You it's like, why mean? didn't he just do Damn. that from the start? Then that would have been weird, but not... Be a lot more sanitary. <laughs> that too. Wow. This shit's nasty. <laughs> this is nasty. I'm sorry. Just being nasty. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm getting mad at this show. Why are you getting mad? I'm getting mad at this episode. You getting mad? Yeah. I, I told you this was your idea. Yeah, this is gross, man. This yeah, you... <laughs> Oh, it was your idea to do Carl Tanzler. I'm just trying to get through another show. Just trying to come up with another show, and I, this came to the top of my head. I said maybe the audience will like this one. Now you're picking through it. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh, oh gross. And this is why, like he specifically told me, because sometimes yeah. here's how we do the show. It's like sometimes we'll come up with, you know, we'll come up with a topic usually at the last fucking minute, yeah. and then I usually do all the research for it. Now, sometimes, depending on what the topic is, sometimes I'll kind of read him some of the research and yeah. stuff like that. Some now, that I already know. Some or of, if it's yeah. something he already knows about. Sometimes, it's, like better, sometimes it's better not for, for me not to know. That way I can react to it kind of like the way the audience would react to it. Yeah. You know? Which was the case in this yeah. show because I've been, right. you know, that's how I spent most of my weekend researching necrophilia. So I'm just sharing some of the fun with you, it's, see? It's nasty. I know, but see, I've like I said, I've been reading this shit for two days. You've been sitting here for one hour, okay. and he specifically told me not to tell him. Yeah, because I started telling him about the animal necrophilia thing because I thought that was oh, yeah, super I, I fascinating. Didn't, I didn't know about that. I thought that was super fascinating that like birds will like sit there and hump a dead bird that got hit by a car. Man, I'm like that just fucking cracked me there's up so, so much, much. There's so much wrongness in in, in nature. There you know, is. It's just like yeah, to, to to exist is to be wrong. That's how bad some of this stuff is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like I'm saying, so necrophilia in humans now, it's like, yeah, it's still creepy and weird. But now it's like, oh, now it's not as weird anymore because I guess fucking animals do it too. <laughs> so it's not really that surprising. Damn. But, you know. No, there's something wrong with that, man. Those animals don't know any better. That's they true. They just see something there that's their own species and they jump on it and they go, wait, it's not fighting. <laughs> it's not running. 
you know. Awesome. Yeah, I'm just going to yeah, keep this, on humping. Yeah, I'm going to keep on keeping on. I don't think they realize that it's dead, you know. I don't think they really realize it's dead, do they? <laughs> oh, man. Maybe they do. Maybe they're into it. You don't know. Yeah. Hey, this one's free. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. I think yeah. it's I think it's more opportunism. Yeah. But uh, anyway, the case of Carl Tanzler actually kind of struck a chord in popular culture. Uh, shit, there's shitloads of like songs about him and stuff like that. I think. Uh, um, da, da, da. and you will know us by the trail of dead. They did a He's song about him. Yeah. And perv. you know, they did like fucking, there's a band called the black Dahlia murder yeah. uh, that did a song about him. And uh, you know, there's lots of other ones. And like I said, the Ripley's believe it or not museum in Key West which I don't know if it's still there now, like, because oh, we live pretty far from Key West. We live in Orlando, but, um, you know, they used to have, you know, a thing of Carl Tanzler and Maria Elena, like him <laughs> preparing her, her corpse or whatever. So I guess they had like a little fake thing of that. I don't know yeah. if it's still there or not, but um, yeah. So necrophilia, you guys, it's, here's the interesting thing. Like I said, and since I had to read about necrophilia all weekend, now you Are have you to hear about it too. Are you going to start talking about this again? Yeah. Damn. Well, yeah, because we, we still okay. have a couple minutes of the show. Okay. But um, out of all the people that have the necrophiliac fetish that they've studied, they broke it down into like percentages of their motives, mm-hmm. right? The overwhelming majority of them, 68% as a matter of fact, their whole motivation was... For an unresisting partner. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. kind of, that is the, by and large, the, the greatest motivation. Um, and then down from that, 21%. Because they're so nasty that a, a living person would resist them. Yeah, that's what that's, usually happens. Yeah. Well, see, that was another thing that I kind of found fascinating about yeah. these two guys is they weren't like repulsive or anything right. like that. Like they weren't repulsive looking. They weren't like, you know, they just looked like normal dudes. Weird. They just, you know, their brains were just broken. But, um, you know, the next one down, 21%, uh, it's because, you know, their spouse died or whatever, and they still yeah. want to re- maintain connection, which I guess is the most understandable. Um, only 15% genuinely attracted to dead people. Ugh. Only 15%. So if that makes you feel any yeah. better, that's not that many people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then there's a smaller percentage that, uh, that, you know, they have low self-esteem, which I guess probably all of them do, yeah. but they have low self-esteem and they want to... Um, express power over a dead person which seems dumb to me because i'm like the dead person doesn't know that you're expressing power over them yeah well one thing that matters is them yeah they can't express power over living people so yeah but yeah so um hopefully you guys enjoyed the show much more than tom did no i didn't like this show at all (laughs) (laughs) but as again and i'm gonna repeat that this was his idea okay yeah this is true i take take the blame for it yeah i came up i i came up with the anatoly angle because i i discovered him while i was researching carl tanzler i could kind of handle that one you know what i mean because chances he probably wasn't really having sex with them you know what i mean he was just making dolls out of them but you know it was almost dude yeah anatoly it almost seemed like a i want to talk about it like he was like a father figure walking out of the show no you can't no you can't it's not over yet i'm not walking out (laughs) Out. This is the first time this has happened yeah, on the history gross, of 13 This is gross, man. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. This is gross, man. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Well, I have to do the end part now. Okay. Do I'm you, not talking about do it Do the anymore. end part. I'm not talking about it anymore. Okay. I promise I'm not talking about it anymore. I'll come back. I promise I'm not talking about it anymore. This is hilarious. No, man. I don't like that. Man, now, now that I know that this is how you're going to react, now I'm going to purposely look for the grossest shit I can no. find. <laughs> Cause it it bothers me, but not. No, just the more the more I keep more the more you keep talking about it, the more I think about it, the 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 worse it is. You yeah. Know? Like, oh, God, I get. I have nasty. like I have I have like a really dark sense of humor. That's nasty. Like, see. That's just nasty. So this stuff, know. like it's 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 not exactly funny to me. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but I don't know. It's wrap just, it up. Wrap it, it up. Doesn't bother me that just, much. Just be quiet. Wrap it up. Keep, <laughs> keep, keep trying. Keep trying to bring it back. You keep trying to bring it back. Okay. Into the conversation. I don't. Why want don't to well, it. why don't you do the end part so you get your mind off it? Uh, no, you do it. Yeah, he doesn't even remember no, what it's supposed to say. No, I'm disoriented. Okay. Go ahead. Man, I didn't know I'd have that yeah, much effect ahead, on it. Okay. Weird. Well, anyway, 
like I said, hopefully you enjoyed this show more than he did. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you like the show, please head on over to the Patreon of the, uh, what, now you're messing me up. Yeah. The Project Entertainment Network yeah. Patreon. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh, go to their Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash projectentnet and give them a buck or two. That's uh, who hosts our audio version. And if you like our YouTube channel, you know, you can go over there and follow us over there. Follow us on Twitter, 13 o'clock podcast. We have a Facebook page, 13 o'clock podcast. Also, we still have t-shirts. I still just have the five, but we're going to do other ones. Maybe I'll do one for this show. (laughs) And Tom will not want one. But, um, (laughs) so, you know, for, okay. Well, no, I have to bring it up one more time because I have to say for our musical interlude at the end, Right. This was the first song I thought of when I thought about this topic. Mm-hmm. We got to do typo negative, okay? So we're gonna put some typo negative okay. on, on the end. All right. So uh, <laughs> anyway, well, uh, we will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye. <laughs>